one to give it a while to warm up. You'll see it start moving. So now it's time to see how to build this Sterling engine. I cut out a few things already and drilled holes in them just uh, for the sake of speeding things up. So first I have my displacer piston right here. Now this is the cylinder for it. And I used a glass test tube right here that I cut. They don't cut very cleanly so you can see it's kind of broken inside of uh, the end of a copper tube. And then the piston that fits perfectly inside it is another glass test tube. Here we have cans and then some cutout pieces of tin and styrofoam. So this cutout piece of styrofoam here with some tin on the bottom and a hole cut through is going to serve as my displacer piston. So I have this right here, a metal bar that will fit perfectly in here. I cut it out so it fits. So we'll start off by positioning that there and putting a dab of super glue on it. We don't want to use hot glue here because this part might get hot, the bottom of it. We can't have it getting too hot though because we have styrofoam on the bottom. So once you've finished applying the super glue there, I also added just a little bit of hot glue and here just to keep this from leaning as it dries. Next, well what we don't want to do is we don't want to attach this to here yet because we still need the displacer piston inside. So let's attach the power piston. To attach the power piston, we'll start off by gluing this to this right here, to my little brass tube, and poking the brass tube in here. So I put my glue around here. So I put my glue around here, press the copper tube to it. The most important thing is you don't want any air to escape the system, it needs to be an airtight system. I put glue in the end of this right here, just so nothing escapes. So this is all airtight and dry now. I made a few heat sinks, just a thin piece of metal, so I'm going to slide this on. They're not necessary, but they may make your performance just a little better, maybe not even noticeable, so it's not too important. I glue around the outside so that it's all a nice airtight system. Now I'm going to put this in right here. At this point we have to wobble it around a bit just so you can get it in because it's a very tight fit and um, once you get it in it may pop through a little too far so then you may need to push it back out just so it's flush because you don't want your displacer piston brushing against it. Alright so the bottom of this here has now dried and it is looking perpendicular to this looking fairly nice. So. What I'm going to do next is I cut a hole out in the bottom of this here and I pushed something through that fits perfectly over this right here. So you can go ahead and glue this in. Okay, so once you glued around here and the inside is all airtight around this thing here that slides over this, we are going to need to put this inside this is the last time you're going to be seeing this, so if there's any changes you want to make, make them. And we will no longer be accessing the inside of this. It's all getting sealed off. 
So now make sure you have your sides right here, your holes in line with your piston right here. Now do dabs of glue. Apply lots of pressure on this. So, so do dabs of glue to hold everything in place. And you're going to apply lots of pressure because you want it to be a tight fit between this and this here. And that tight fit will basically make for an optimal heat transfer. And then once that's dry enough, you can just go around it and make sure it's all airtight. And if you see that right there, when I pull this out, it tries pulling back, it pulls right back, right? So that be so now that we have this assembled to this point, we want to do our next test, the real test. And we already tested it once to see if it um, was airtight. Next, we're going to do it the way a Stirling engine is going to work, which is with heat. So I'm going to put this here. The, this gets stuck a little if it goes too far down. So you may notice that, so I'll try making it not go too far down. Lift this up a little. And you can see it'll pop back up a little. You see it moving as it goes down. That basically tells us that we have a decent seal. It's um, going back up. That's because of the expanding air. It means our seal's airtight. So now I decided to put it all together. So I built a crankshaft here out of a clothes hanger. And I offset the displacer piston 90 degrees from the power piston. I used copper wire to connect it from here to here and copper wire from here to here. And this is um, the wire used in houses just without the insulation. And um, the reason I do that is because it's very malleable so I can adjust it which it does require a lot of. And then here, on this side, I glued a brass tube onto it. And this is to counter the weight from my displacer piston right here, which is fairly heavy. All I need to do now is balance this right here, because this now here is too heavy. So I'll go about this by taking off bit by bit until I find that it's perfectly balanced. Okay, so as you can see, I made a few final changes. Um, again, with the uh, balance right here and um, a flywheel on it. And now, let's see it work. So you have to keep it elevated above the candle just a bit so that it, um, the candle doesn't get extinguished. Once you give it a while to warm up, you'll see it start moving.
At this point it continues fairly unchanging. A few comments though, I did eventually fix the wobble between the um, power piston's arm and the crankshaft and it did give me a little more speed. Um, I do try adding oil later on, um, that doesn't really do much. And um, one other thing is the heat sinks really helped in keeping the top cold, they were cold to the touch after I added them so that was one good change.